Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and in today's video we will be talking about introverted intuition and the INFJ and the INTJ. Because introverted intuition is so often misunderstood as a dark process when in reality its nature for an INFJ or an INTJ is bright. It is not a shadow process for an INFJ or an INTJ, but it is a path towards gaining clarity, understanding and perspective. INFJs and INTJs need to use their introverted intuition as an engine, as the motor towards gaining more clarity, more perception, more awareness of the world around them. And not just towards gaining more awareness, but also towards being able to make peace with the world around them. Being able to understand nature, reality, why we are here, why bad things happen, what we need to do to move forward, how we can move forward in difficult situations, and where we are headed. We need introverted intuition as this reassuring voice inside of us, this reassuring monologue that gives us perspective, focus, and guidance. It is the guidance process for an INFJ. It is the process that will take you and show you where you are headed in life and what your role or passion is in life. Introverted intuition is going to be your passion as an INFJ, as an INTJ. And it is only by learning to listen to this process, by learning to hear out your inner monologue, that you can gain happiness, transformation and increased awareness. Understand as an INFJ, as an INTJ, that you are a philosopher and a visionary at your best. But understand that to be this, you need to use this. You can't hide from it, you can't avoid it, you can't fight it. Understand also that this process is just as important as its destination. Understand that if, even though the process towards gaining awareness, towards gaining understanding, can be difficult, can be against what the world thinks you should do, it is still as important as the end destination. Without the process, you won't get the end destination, you won't get the fruits of introvert intuition, you won't get the perspectives, the awareness that will help you ascend and to become the best version of yourself. So, Introvert intuition is, for an INFJ or an INTJ, both perspectives from introversion and from being an intuitive, and it is vision from being an intuitive and a judging type. Introvert intuition for an INFJ or an INTJ relies on simulation, in the sense that you have to actively envision scenarios, you have to actively formulate concepts, you have, to, you have to create theoretical models of the world, of the universe, and you have to use these models to understand reality and your own life and other people's lives. Introvert intuition is what we use to make sense of the difficult issues in life. Why bad things happen? Why the world is the way it is, why people act the way they do, why things happen the way they do. Introvert intuition is the primary tool towards gaining vision and towards gaining perspective. And perspective and vision will give an INFJ or an INTJ peace. And it will give happiness and it will give joy. It will give this sense of absurdity or this ability to laugh at the most ridiculous things in the world, the most absurd things in the world, and the most difficult things in the world. It will give the ability to accept the most difficult things in the world. And it will give the ability to move forward. Introvert intuition is not a shadow process for the INFJ or an INTJ, but ENFPs and ENTPs may understand it as such. For the ENFP or the ENTP, introvert intuition may seem dark or brooding or grumpy in its nature. But that's only how it is to them. To them, to us, I mean. Extroverted intuition is what appears dark, scary and uncomfortable. The process of introverted intuition can feel a little isolating and it can feel like you are brooding or it can feel like you're grumpy or that you are that something is wrong that something is amiss 
But like I said, the process is just as important as the destination. I want you to recognize, and I think you will recognize, something fascinating about introvert intuition. Something fascinating about introvert intuition is that it begins, it is fueled by dark extroverted intuition. When an INFJ or an INTJ is thrown out into the chaotic world of possibilities, where things are going to happen that you don't understand, where people are going to do things that you can't comprehend, when things are going to happen that are beyond your awareness, beyond your understanding, beyond your current level of insight. When this happens, you are going to be thrown into a form of cocoon. Yes, basically, what tends to happen is after these experiences of massive potential, possibility, and chaos beyond your comprehension, you will have to go into a cocoon mode. You will have to go dark. You will have to disconnect from social medias. You will have to take some time away from your phone. You're going to have to take some time to think. And don't fight it. I see so many people try to fight it. I see so many people try to force themselves to stay above surface when they need to go below it. I see so many people force themselves to stay attentive, to stay present, to stay in reality when they need time to process. And because of this, the process just takes longer time. Detachment, distance is important for an introvert and intuitive type. You need to go into your inner lab. You need to see yourself going into your head, formulating a vision, simulating to comprehend what it is that you didn't comprehend that you experienced before. Perhaps it was something someone asked you that you didn't know the answer to. Perhaps it was something that someone said to you that brought up or showed you that something needed to be processed. Perhaps someone brought up a new possibility to you, a possibility so big and so fascinating that you had to step into this lab environment to figure it out. So, when you're in this lab environment, why do you complain? Why do you complain when you can enjoy the journey? Why do so many people forget to enjoy the journey? I feel like you should be thankful because you've been given the chance to learn something and you have the chance right now to take the time to discover it. You are right now immersed with your passion, ideas, possibilities, absurdities, complexity and you have been given the chance to rise beyond and to understand it. So why do you complain? Why do you feel like you have to be on all the time? Why do you feel like you have to be this uh, ESTP version of yourself, this ESFP version of yourself, always happy, always smiling, always present, always uh, above surface, dancing above everything. Why do you feel like you always have to know the answer to everything? I find that understanding that you don't know everything is one of the key components to becoming a philosopher, to truly stepping into the shoes of being a philosopher. Understand that the more you understand, the more you will know how little you know. And understand that this is a positive thing. Not knowing is a gift. Knowing and having the chance to dive into and understand the world is a gift. If you love it, if you are an intuitive type. And embrace that opportunity. Now think about it. Where is this process headed? What is it we gain from distance, from detachment, from this simulated world? Well, we get insight. We get vision. We get this experience that we know what's going to happen next. We know what's going to happen in the future. We have a plan. We have a goal. We have an idea of the future. We know the likeliest course of event. We know... We have an idea who is going to be in the next election and what's going to happen and what you can do about it. As an introvert intuitive, 
who lets this process run forward, you are going to be profoundly intellectual. You are going to be a visionary of epic proportions. And so, this is why introvert intuition is such a positive influence on INFJ and on the INTJ. Because it is only when you ignore this process, it is only when you run away from it, that it becomes a burden on you. That's only when it becomes something crippling. The, it is generally true that an INFJ or an INTJ that forces themselves to stay above surface is in the turmoil. They are prone to anger, they are prone to outbursts, they are prone to restlessness, they are prone to saying things that are wrong and to acting and making misguided decisions. The INFJ or the INTJ that doesn't let themselves process are going to make stupid choices. It's true, like you're gonna do things and then you're gonna realize afterwards that it was a stupid decision and you're gonna be like, why didn't I trust my intuition? Why didn't I? Because I knew somewhere that I knew the answer to this. I knew that I needed to process this. But why didn't I let myself do it? Why did I force myself to be on and to pretend like I knew when I didn't? Why did I force myself to force out an answer early, prematurely, when it wasn't the right answer. It is, however, important to recognize that blocks are real for INFJs and INTJs. And the blocks come rather from a hyper-focus than from intuition in itself. It is under the grip of extroverted sensing that an INFJ or an INTJ can become blocked. You can find yourself repeating an answer over and over. You can find yourself repeating a word or a sentence or a phrase over and over. You can narrow yourself down. You can avoid extrovert intuition, your primary fuel for insight and for discovery, by hiding away in your tower. By hiding away in this predictable reality, this fake reality, where everything goes according to plan, where everything goes according to your old simulations. But often, what you need isn't to find status quo, where you can maintain the same autopilot role, where you keep on going through things you already know over and over again. But what you need is to let yourself be surprised, to let yourself be distracted, to let yourself be challenged by extroverted intuition and this experience of your shadow function as this influence on you, this voice in you that tells you you don't know everything yet. You need to understand that there are things you don't know and you need to immerse that and you need to embrace that and you need to pursue understanding of those things. You need to let yourself dive into these things and to let yourself be stimulated by it. And you need to actively take your time to predict it and to try to make sense out of it. That is how you grow as an INFJ or an INTJ. And some ending remark about the end destination of introvert intuition. The end destination of introvert intuition is self-transformation. When you arrive at the end destination, you are going to be a different person from when you are started. You're gonna have a new perspective, a new vision, a new path to take before you. The old monologue or the version you had before must, was maybe half accurate, but it was not 100% accurate. It explained 10% of reality, but maybe the new you understood 15% of it. And maybe the one after that will understand 20%. And that is what transformation represents, this heightened awareness of the real, true essence of everything, the real world of ideas, the real world of vision, the real understanding of the universe. And that is what you are pursuing as an INFJ, or as an INTJ. The real understanding of everything, the real theory of everything. So what is it? What is the theory of everything. What is your theory of everything? How much do you know? How much do you let yourself be blocked by the thought that you know everything when you don't? How much do you hide from what you don't know? How much do you ignore the things that 
go outside of your system? How many things is it that you refuse to listen to? How many possibilities do you forget to pay attention to? How many potential opportunities do you miss because you aren't open on that frequency yet? How many discoveries and insights do you miss because you don't let yourself take time to process? And how intelligent, how genius would you be if you let yourself let these processes unfold? That is my end thought for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys in the next one.